Look at the pretty girl driving the truck. Welcome to Candid Travels Texas. We are entering into October 2019. And according to this vehicle, it is 125 degrees Fahrenheit here in Central Texas, Austin, Texas, Uomao Eokaina Ikapono, or Texas. Hey, you know what? Extreme temperatures, we now know. Extreme cold, Wim Hof method. Extreme heat, Wim Hof method. It's actually good for your age reversal, anti-aging life. Hey, people lived a lot longer before air conditioning was founded and blue zones always have extreme temperatures. Okay, it's dropping. It is 4.58 p.m. Welcome to Candid Travels, Texas. And here in Texas, be at zero. All right. We love Bucky's. If you're not from Texas and you've never been to a Bucky's, you don't know what you're missing. It's the best. What'd you say? It's the best. Yes, it's the best. It's the, biggest. It's the best. Yeah, I may go there and get a, a Texan dog and combine it with what I'm going to eat tonight. <laughs> we eat once a day at night before we chill out at home. And it's a good way to live. So, anyway. What I was going to do is I'm going to explain an often asked question I've gotten from many of you all internationally. And that is the secret of the breatharian. The secret. The secret. Actually, it's not really a secret. But it's a common asked question and here is the answer. A breatharian, as you know, are groups of people who still exist on this planet who do not eat food, nor do they even need to drink water. So, if you notice uh, the account in the New Testament and in other holy books, Buddha and such, they, they've gone and they fasted and prayed for like, let's say, 40 days straight. And the fasting includes not even drinking water. So you're thinking, well, how the heck do they exist continuously without drinking water. Okay, food, you can understand, but water, okay. So this is the actual real world mechanism behind why breatharians exist. Look, it's 120 and these ladies are out having fun. They're not even that young. Some of them are like young women, some are uh, older women. They're with their mom. There's the mom with the daughters. They're having fun. And people out here, we are okay. You know what, it's dropped. It's 115. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, back to the breatharianism. All right. So, breatharian, um, I'm going to show you what our garden looks like in this weather. We're entering October of 2019. It's amazing. Okay. A breatharian, the reason why they can exist without food or water is because they recycle their vital fluids. What does that mean? Whenever they urinate, they dr either drink it or they put it upon their skin and it absorbs into the skin because it is H2O3. The last uh, episode we talked about what distilled water is. It is H2O3 versus H2O. And that makes all the difference in the world. Bodily fluids are H2O3. Now, I made a mistake. I may have said H2O2 at one point by mistake. So correct that one from last week. Okay, so a breatharian will recycle their fluids. So they don't really need to eat food. Also, the, the, this is a very important question I've been asked by many people, including my, my, my dad, my father, who is a medical doctor, you know, very well-renowned surgeon pathologist. And medical doctors, many of them don't, are, not, are not given this information. But the reason why you don't need to drink water, even though he's like, well, you know, there's evaporation, you know, even if you recycle your urine, how can the person exist continually? Well, the reason why they can is because the actual process of recycling that vital fluid can do many, many things biochemically 
endocrine wise, uh, the central nervous system, etc., etc., within that person's internal body state, including what many people believe the decalcification of the pineal gland as well as detoxification. Now, when a breatharian detoxes their body in that such a manner, their human body itself becomes a condenser. What does that mean? A condenser is something that will take the humidity from the air and make it into distilled water, H2O3. So we have to remember that human beings, we do breathe in air, right? In our lungs, there is humidity. And the humidity can be converted into hydration. So proper breathing, many of us, we do qigong or breath work, right? Has a, an effect, a, a non-dehydration uh, effect. Meaning, when a person is ill, and they're dehydrated. The primary reason why is not because they're not consuming enough fluids inside their mouth. It's because their lungs are weak. Hydration is from your lungs, also your skin. So whatever atmosphere you're in, even in desert areas, there's some type of humidity. Now, from what I know, most breatharians live in a tropical climate, like Houston <laughs> or Austin. So it's a lot easier. So basically, we as human beings, all of us, not just breatharians, there's, they're not genetically superior to us or anything like that. Uh, they are no different than us. But human beings, when we are purified, when we have been detoxified, when we have reached the level of grand mastery, okay, we become walking condensers. Now, if you go to parts of uh, England and Scotland, you're going to see these areas where they build like these rocks and walls and then the fog will come in. This is how they get their water supply in ancient Scottish, uh, Scottish villages. How? There's, you don't see any rivers, you don't see any ocean, right, some places, but there is fog. And so what they do is they build a kind of a rock formation and when the fog comes through in the morning, the dew forms on the rocks. And the rocks are built in such a way so that the dew will flow downward into a system and it goes into their water supply. And so a lot of Scottish, ancient Scottish people drank H2O3 only and rainwater. Of course, you have rain. But there are times when there's no rain. So they can make condensers. So as human beings, we are human condensers. So that's the answer. The secret to why breatharians don't need to eat or even drink water. Now, uh, just back in the old days, you had breatharians, and in Eastern European cultures, there are people who drank blood. Very wealthy people. They're, they're the ancestors to the vampire, the vampire myth. Next time on that. So we're at Zilker Botanical Gardens. Austin area at 112 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go and see how it looks. Yeah. We're here now. All right. Hey, Bucky, how are you doing? So we are here in 100 and above 100 degree weather according to the temperature in the sun. Now, in the shade, it's probably around 90, but it's not even too hot. Enjoyable. She's not sweating. Look, no. any bullets of sweat? I don't see any bullets of sweat. You don't have to look. There's no bullets and no, not a wrinkle on her face either. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's see how clear is this. Now, we got to get our lotus flowers going. Because look, at a hundred and, well, I'm, I'm thinking about it's buying one. Uh, no, I think we're going to, oh, we're, we're not enough sun. That's right. That's why yeah, our backyard, yeah. And in the winter time, they bloom. For, Okay, but as you can tell, even though at a hundred some degrees, we've got greenery and you've got Nam Yo Ho Dengego, Nam Yo Ho Dengego, water lilies, aka Japanese lotus flowers. Austin Pond Society. So, yeah, this is what it looks like out here at a, like, you know, 90 some degrees. It's beautiful. 
How much did it cost for locals to get in today? Uh, four bucks. Four bucks each? Oh, two dollars each. Two dollars each. And it goes to support the Austin Pond and Garden Associations, which we have a pond in our backyard. I love my pond. You love your pond? Yes. We converted it. Took me a while to get her away from that concept of having to have a chlorine pool in the backyard. You go to a natural, natural, natural grade A. There you go. Yeah, it's not too hot, Allison. Look, the flowers are still mm -hmm. out. And this is, we're entering into October. We're entering into October. This is amazing. Look, isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. if we wait, till, I mean, normally at this time of year, we wouldn't have this much greenery. But because it's been so warm and hot, the plants, the tree, the leaves are not even starting to turn. It's amazing, right? So, you know, a lot of people are like complaining that it's hot. I'm loving it. Look, I'm in a tank top and everything. These are new. Yeah, these are new. Oh, I wanted to get some. How hot is it now? It's not too hot, right? It's pretty good. So we got to pick up hay for Reese. We saw Reese last time getting frisky with the Tribbles from Star Trek. Who might be Captain Picard this Halloween. Engage! <laughs> Make it so! Make it so! Engage! Make it so! <laughs> Tea house! Okay, so anybody who wants to visit us here in Texas around this time of year, hey, it could be over 100 degrees. But I guess not everybody will like it, but we love it. All right. This is a Texan by the name of Taniguchi of Japanese ancestry. And this is a entry path restoration. So if you look back at our episode from a few years ago here at Zilka Gardens, you notice that this is brand new, isn't it, Allison? Yes, it was needed. Yeah, she's the one who uh, noticed it. I wouldn't have really noticed these little things. I would have been like, hey, it feels nicer here. I don't know why. So this is completely repaved. So come and visit Zilker Garden. How much is it for non-locals, non non-Austin? Non you have to be a local, like an Austinite. So you, you're from Houston, you still gotta pay. Uh, what was it? How much is it for non non Austin? Anyway, you have to be an Austin or I think an Austin resident or Central Texas resident. All right. Whoa. This is the nice. I love it. Cool. This. Uh, my grandparents had a Japanese garden, and uh, m many parts of this looks like. Their, their Japanese style garden. Yeah. Whoa. We've been here before, but not in this kind of light, right? It was more of a, not as sunny no. last time. So it was last time we were here, you check out our episode, it was kind of uh, overcast. So you can kind of see it. Ah! Lawai'e. Lawai'e. Maui fern. Is that really the Maui fern? Look at it. Doesn't it look like it? Well, how come there's no spores? Maybe not, but they, they're shaped like that. You saw the picture I have upstairs. Now, Lawai'i, if this is Maui Fern, even if you say the, the name Maui Fern, or you look at a picture of it, according to Hawaiian healing arts, right? It will heal space viruses, idiopathic cases. Cases, yeah, it sure as heck looks like it. Don't you think? The shape. Fiftieth anniversary of the Taniguchi Gardens. Yeah, this whole area reminds me of when I was little. My grandparents had a big, kind of pretty big property, and um, they—they're my mother's parents, and they had this kind of a Japanesey center part. We just ran around and played in it a lot. We urinated on their mango tree, supposedly trying to fertilize my brothers and I when we were little. Yeah, this whole area reminds me of their, their house. 
I don't think we, I don't remember a waterfall though, <laughs> but we had this kind of thing. We had the pond and then the architecture. I remember my grandfather trying to work on this really like big, like old Japanese tubs that, you know, like that, just trying to get it to not leak. <laughs> I don't think he was successful, but it's one of those wood tubs that they would soak and have like fun frisky times with their geishas in ancient samurai days. So look at all this. So yeah, we're very lush here, even though it's hot. Stay on pa. Arigato. Thank you. Joko Botanical Garden, 50th anniversary. Whoa, look at this shot here. Thanks for joining us in Canada Travels, Texas. By the way, this is called a blue shield. Blue shield, you see that? It will actually help. It's one of the companies that I actually pick. I don't endorse them, I'm not being paid by them. Uh, I've been waiting for a good company to actually, when you wear this, any kind of 5G or EMF or anything will not mess with you. So check that out, B-L-U-S-H-I-L-D. So thanks for joining us at Canada Travels, Texas. Beautiful waterfall. This is the 50th anniversary of Zilker Gardens. No, the, the Tanaguchi Japanese part. There you go. See, I was waiting for you to Tanaguchi Japanese Gardens. 50th anniversary of the Tanaguchi Gardens. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, okay? Share and subscribe. And any questions, prayer requests, whatever, send to D-R-L-I-U-L-A-L-O-H-A-L-I-U at Gmail. Dot com and for all the members at ATX ITAC, the website is www.facebook.com forward slash ATX Internal Tactical Arts. Aloha! <laughs>